All right, my friends, we got another build show live for you. We got a really good hour long conference for you. We're going to be talking about Canvas today, and I actually have Greg from Canvas with me. Uh, I've also got a couple builder buddies. Well, I should say builder buddies this way. <laughs> Zach Detmore uh, with Detmore Home Improvements in New Jersey. And Steve, I just called you a builder buddy. That was a That's compliment. That's all right. Yeah, I'll take it. That was a I'll take it, man. <laughs> if you don't know Steve Basic, he's an architect uh, based out of Boston, Massachusetts, but really does work all over the country. And on this webinar that we're about to give, we're going to be diving deep into an app, uh, a program, a tool, really, in your tool case called Canvas. And if you would, throw up the graphic real quick. It might be helpful for you if you're watching this, whether you're live or whether you're watching this later. Uh, to actually download the app so you can be looking at it and following along a little bit. And by the way, uh, if you use our code, which is build show, pardon me, build 2023, you're going to get $100 off your first Canvas order. And you're about to find out in a little bit if that's a remodel, a small project, that would pay for a whole scan for free for you. If it's a bigger project, that'd be a pretty significant discount. With that being said, I'm going to first start with Greg here. Uh, Greg, I want you to kind of pretend like we're at a conference, you know, sure. we're, we're meeting at the International Builder Show. Uh, you got a couple builders around here that have used your product before, mm -hmm. but we're talking to some builders, some remodelers, maybe some architects who haven't used Canvas. How do you explain it? Yeah, <clears throat> so Canvas, it's an app that you can download to an iPad Pro or an iPhone Pro. Those devices, uh, the past three years, have LiDAR built directly into the device. So once you have Canvas on the phone, you can go into a space, you can scan a room in about a minute, do a whole home in about 20 to 25 minutes. It depends on the size of the house. About 2,000, 2,400 square foot home. Uh, average American home, three bed, two bath is, is what we talk about when we say 20 to 25 minutes. So you gotta have an, uh, by the way, if you're, if you're downloading the app and watching this along, you gotta have an iPhone Pro 12 or Pro Max, an iPhone Pro 13 or 14, either the standard size mm -hmm. or the Max, or the iPad Pro, a 2020 version or newer. So basically a, a relatively new-ish phone from the last couple of years, as long as you have the Pro version, or the iPad that's Pro, right? right? It's that's gonna right. have that built-in LiDAR feature. Exactly, and the LiDAR, that's that's the sensor built into the device that gives us the level of accuracy that, that we need. Okay, so we're, we're gonna download the device, mm -hmm. and we do a scan, and my understanding is it's kinda like making a video of the room it is. using the scanner, it's right? It's very similar, it'll feel familiar in that way, but what you see on the screen will look a little bit different, because what the phone is actually doing is just collecting measurements. We're looking at everything, uh, we're creating a, a, a mesh as you scan, and you'll see that on the screen, and so it'll look different, but uh, it'll feel very much like you're taking a video of the interior. Um, and so because it'll look different, one of the things you can do to get, have success is ensure you watch the videos. Yeah. Um, we have training videos on our website. Uh, we have training videos in the app. Educate yourself before you take your first scan. It's going to give you the best outcome. Makes if you sense. just go out there, turn it on, and try scanning without really doing any research, we can't really guarantee the results at that point. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then how accurate is this technology? Yeah, it's 98 to 99% accurate. So if you if you take a scan correctly, then when, when you get back and you compare our measurements to what you might have taken out on site, it's gonna be very close. You could be about an inch off uh, one way or another on a 100 inch wall, so to say. So to okay, speak. that's interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, as we were talking about this ahead of time, we were talking about this accuracy thing. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe some people watching might go, oh, only 99% accurate. I'm better at my tape measure. I should right. just use a tape. Uh, you've had a lot of experience with this, Zach. What do you say about that accuracy percentage? Well, we're, we're using this um, software basically on projects where there's no architect. So if we're doing a bathroom remodel or a small kitchen, maybe a direct replacement where we're not doing any alterations, but the client would still want a rendering to see what their tile selection looks like mm -hmm. or understand where they want to pick a 36 inch vanity or 48 inch vanity. Um, that's what we're using it for. And in those applications, um, we're pretty much using this software to create takeoffs. So we want to know our square footage of tile on the floor, how much baseboard we're buying, et cetera. And if we're off by even as much as an inch in a large bathroom, we're still going to have overage on all of those takeoff measurements. So it's, it's pretty much irrelevant. And in terms of helping the client make a decision 
with their design aesthetics, it doesn't really matter. It's just helpful for them to understand, okay, this mirror is going to look too big in this space. I'm glad we have that model to rely on. So it, it, you know, we use it as a tool to um, help the client make decisions ahead of time and keep us from having those redesigns and those stop works. Um, that happens if the client's not informed about the choices they're making. Sense, Zach. And we're actually going to show <clears throat> one of your jobs in a second, Zach. What I forgot to mention before I come back to you, Greg, is for the audience out there, if you are watching this webinar live, on the Q&A tab, uh, which on my phone as I'm looking at it is in the top right, that's where you're going to go to ask questions. Uh, and in fact, we've already got a question in from Joe. I'll get to this question in a little bit. Joe, we're going to save about 15, 20 minutes at the end. I think there's going to be a lot of questions. Uh, if you're watching this later, not live, uh, you don't get to ask a live question, click on uh, our newsletter so you can get uh, prepared for future webinars that we do so you can ask a live question. But the place to ask a question is on the Q&A, not on the chat tab. I'm not looking at chat, so that doesn't, doesn't <laughs> it's going to go into a black hole, basically. Okay, Greg, so you've done the scan. Uh, how long does it take to get that back and what does that output look like? Yeah, so if it's a, a whole home and it's your average size home, it's going to take you about a day or two to get that model back. Uh, the model, it's going to be layered out in the way that you would expect. It really depends on the software that you work in. Each one is a little bit different than the other. Uh, but what we call it, uh, we say it's design ready. So everything, the, there's intelligence built into the model. So mm -hmm. walls know their walls, sinks know their sinks. Uh, and so on. So it's 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 ready for you to start, and we, you know whenever we deliver it, we want it to fit into your workflow that you're doing. Um, and there's there might be a little bit of work to to have it match exactly what you wanted to do, but you're very quickly going to be able to get it up and running. And the time efficiency and savings yeah. uh, is is really the value here. Yeah, speak to that for a minute. The time efficiency. Yeah. I think that is a that's a big one that people are going to resonate with. You know, you mentioned. Uh, you know, a small bathroom, a kitchen might take just a few minutes to scan. Mm -hmm. A whole house might take longer. What would that scanning time take compared to manually pulling out the tape measure or even a laser tape, yeah. writing those down and transferring that to make a model? Yeah, so it really depends on the project. But if you take, again, a whole home, average American home, you're going to scan that in 20 to 25 minutes and then get that model back two days later. How about that? Uh, yeah. That's fast. It's it's real fast. Uh, what we hear is it's it's going to take somebody about eight to ten hours to measure a home to the same level of detail that we do, and then about the same amount of time to create that model in the software that, that we're creating. Ooh, that's a legit um, time savings right there. That's right. And then talk to us as we talk about that time savings, what's the mm -hmm. cost? Because obviously if it's crazy expensive, then maybe it is cheaper for me to go out and spend eight hours measuring. Right, so it's, it, we, we charge 18 cents per square foot. And so that's gonna translate to about 350 to $400 for your average home. Holy cow, um, that's so great. You, yeah, if you think about what your time is worth and how much time it actually takes you to measure an entire home and then transpose that data into a 3D model, yeah. All of that, what, what, compare I mean, that to the actual let's cost. Let's be honest, if you bill your time at $7 an hour, this is kind of expensive. <laughs> it's true. Uh, that yeah. is true. And it probably is cheaper true. for you to go measure it. <laughs> but if you're above $7 an hour, I bet there's a giant savings <laughs> to be had with Canvas. Absolutely. <laughs> and that, that's why we built it. Let's, uh, let's put you in hold for one sec, because I want to hear from Zach in the field, because uh, you've actually been using this program for a while, Zach. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think talking about the value of it, we... This, this particular model I'm about to share, um, we did two bathroom renovations in the same house. The first floor was sort of a rectangular room and we hand measured it. And uh, basically one of my uh, carpenters, Kalen, he was measuring it. I had my laptop there and I was just entering the information as he gave it to me. We spent about like, I would say 30 minutes in there measuring, getting all the details. And so there's two of us. So we'll just say it took one person one hour to do that simple bathroom. Okay. Then we went up to the upstairs bathroom, which has all these off angles and is much more complicated. And I physically don't have the skills to enter that type of data into the chief architect software okay, I so use. So you're chief architect. Right. So I don't, I don't know how, I'm not familiar enough with the tool to know how to do that. So it would be beyond my capability to do this. Um, except I was just able to use Canvas. So it took about maybe a minute to scan the whole room, and I got superior details because I wasn't measuring registers <laughs> on uh, when I was downstairs measuring the other one. 
And, you know, this ended up costing me getting the model about, we'll say, less than $30 probably, right, for this Holy bathroom. Cow. So and walk us through this floor plan. This does not look like an easy, I mean, we're curved wall as soon as you walk into this bathroom. Is that right? Right. So you have a curved wall there. Then this is a little like eyebrow dormer. Oh my and then gosh. this is a larger dormer. And then you have a flat roof in this part over this bathtub. So there's a lot of changes that are happening. If I go to this camera view, you can so sort of see oh, dang. all these angles. And there was this, this is all the as built. So there was a bookcase here. And I probably wouldn't have taken the time to get that bookcase yeah, yeah. in. And the other value thing to think about is a lot of times we walk into jobs where the client doesn't have a defined budget and they'll say, well, we really want to see if we can afford to do X, Y, and Z. Mm. So I might have to go do a site visit, look at all these rooms. Am I going to measure all these rooms when I'm not sure that I'm going to get the job? Yeah, this is going to happen or not. I'm not going to do that. But with Canvas, it's easy enough for me to do it quickly. I can keep that scan in my phone before sending it. Um, and once they approve that they want to move forward with something, I already have the measurements in my phone. There's no re return trip that needs to happen. And I'm able to just get to work and order the material and give them a more accurate price. I'm almost hearing from you that you think of Canvas as more of a sales tool than necessarily a production tool. It is, because we're not, you know, we're not architects, we're not designers. We're only using Canvas to create elevations based on client input um, so we can empower the carpenters in the field to give up to do their work. So instead of, you know, telling my carpenter, when you get to the point of the electrician putting the sconces in, mm -hmm. go ahead and make sure they're all right with that height. We're able to, you know, call out all the heights, get approval on this from the homeowner before we start, and then they're just following the plans. Yeah, look at that, that was a complicated bathroom too. You had different ceiling heights. This captured your registers your grills, everything in that bathroom. Exactly, yeah. and the client's able to say, oh, this mirror looks like a good size mirror. Those sconces seem a little bit too big for the space. Mm -hmm. So we're getting ahead of all that. So hopefully, this is a live-in remodel, of course. I do a lot of those. So you really want to squeeze the duration of time. That's, that's all about efficiency. So if we can get all these decisions made before we show up, it's a heck of a lot of a more profitable job and a yeah. better experience for the client. That's pretty awesome. Now you mentioned you get something else from Canvas as well, which is this uh, measurement report. Walk me through that. What, what, is, what is that helpful for? So this is perfect for uh, my wife who handles the uh, pre-construction side who's ordering materials. She may not be familiar with exactly what's going on in the dimensions, but they give you this report which basically names the wall and then gives you dimensions and areas so we're able to easily oh, check that out yeah. um if the client wants picks a high-end tile for example we're able to easily say well if you go with the half wall it's this price if you go with the full wall it's that price and we're not going into the chief architect file and having to drag measurements to calculate those areas it's, this is just much easier to read and you can have this on any of our laptops instead of the one laptop that ha is powerful enough to run Chief Architect software. That's pretty cool. So check this example out. W14, which is your curved wall right here. If I go to this report over here, that's a 40.5 square foot wall. So if that wall was getting, let's say, a floor to ceiling uh, plaster treatment, I could just plug in what I know my plaster guy charges me per square foot and boom, I've got that right away. And you're saying a bathroom like this is, you know, under 30 bucks to get this amount of information in a minute or so of your time. It's huge. I mean, that's a big deal. And the other thing that's to think about maker. here, like I need to order a curved base molding and base cap for this oh, wall. Yeah, that's right. So having that Flexible. linear dimension there just allows us to go ahead and order that versus, you know, the traditional way we would have done it is, is maybe have to get a carpenter in the field to measure that. Now yeah. the information's there and, and it's less communication where, you know, the more we communicate, the more we can mess up getting the details right. That's pretty cool. So it's now, pretty powerful. Now, I'm not familiar with Chief Architects, but show me, you mentioned earlier that like, you might get a picture of a tile selection from uh, a homeowner who says, hey, I'm thinking about this tile. And then you're using this 3D render in your sales process. What does that generally look like? You don't necessarily need to do it for me on camera, but just what, what would that generally look like? Or walk me through that process. So basically, if you went to a website like um, we use, a, we use a company called Wayne Tile. So if you went to their website and you, you, they have a picture of what the tile looks like, you can select that as long as it's a repetitive pattern, mm -hmm. drop it into Chief Architect, and it'll create a grid 
which can be dimensioned correctly, and then almost like you would in an old paint tool, you just like pop it on the area you want it to be, and it'll put that tile on the floor and the wall. So if we jump into this, you know, this camera view, we could just paint the floor paint with floor whatever, or paint this wall, and it's it's really drag and drop. And it's, you know, if you want to be competitive as a remodeler, having having the ability to give the the customer renderings of what their space is going to look like really it's really necessary because a lot of people are able to offer this and 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 these are people like me who don't have training in CAD or drafting so it's great to have a tool that gets you that skips the step from measuring to inputting all right. and basically all you need to know how to do is control the software once you have the model that's pretty cool so instead of me being the only person in the company who can take those measurements and get them into the computer. Now pretty much anyone just has to watch the Canvas tutorial, can take that model themselves, and then I can help them modify it afterwards. That's so it's, pretty cool. it really frees me up to not have to be part of that sales process. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to be on that job. You could use someone else in your team, even one of your carpenters, to get out and just take the Canvas app and get that model. Right, and as long as the model's good, I'm not having that doubt in my mind, like, did they measure something that was 63 that was supposed to be 36 it happens all the time there's a lot of human error there it doesn't matter how skilled you are That's if, you, a great point. if you had a long night you might be screwing up your numbers which could drastically change the way we're estimating the project yeah that could that could put your uh, your <laughs> estimate off by tens of thousands of dollars that could be a loss on your side or at least egg on your face exactly and typically we won't catch it till until it's time to look bad. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's right. I only budgeted X for tile, but that's yeah. not enough to do the whole floor. Whoops. So you got to pay me more. So I always like to take the path of least resistance, you know, and this this is skipping a step, and it's making it cheaper, and it's and it's not something I particularly enjoy. No yeah. one really wants to go take these measurements. What do you think about their pricing? I'm curious. You know, if, if I were to tell you this is 18 cents a square foot, uh, what's your what's your immediate reaction to that pricing? I don't know how they're making any money on this, so, like, really, because this it's it would cost me triple that to measure it, and even I don't even know how long it would take me to do this particular bathroom. That would be hours and hours, and I wouldn't trust the, the dimensions. Yeah, you that's know? pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. That's the power of that uh, that lidar, really, and these guys figuring out how to turn that into a commercial product that you know on a one off. It wouldn't seem like you're making any money, so you've got to get a lot of people to uh, to use it. So I'm, I'm glad you sponsored today's webinar. Let's go to Steve, because Steve's got an example on a bigger project, yeah. including exteriors. Uh, talk us through your example, Steve. So I have a ranch up here. You can see basically the floor plan, and you can see all of the dimensions there. I mean, just to kind of reiterate what uh, <clears throat> Zach was talking about. I mean, it is it is a huge time saver. The accuracy is probably the priceless part for me in just getting it right that first time. I mean, in in measuring buildings for 30 years, you inevitably, oh man, by the time you go all the way around the building, you're off by three inches or four inches. And it's like, where is that? You might have to go back because you forgot a, a dimension. And so just me returning to go get one dimension is probably equal to the cost that these guys would charge to draw it up. Now, yeah. from a design aspect, the beauty of it is, is not only do I get these existing conditions here that you can sit down and, you know, just even with the iPad, I can sit there with homeowners and talk about, you know, let's, if we take this out and... We want to add the addition here, and you can have these really quick conversations with them two days after I measure, mm -hmm. or after we scan it, yep. right? And we have that instead of us going out and measuring it and taking a week or so to draw it up and get it all. But the beauty also is that it comes in the 3D version, right? So this is oh, the so SketchUp the model. Exterior scan as well. In yeah. Thing. And you know when you when you have the SketchUp model, then you can take it and all of that information that is cuts. inside the section. So I can open up that section, and you can see the detail of the stairs. Right, it scanned the existing rail. So if we wow. said, hey, we want to match that rail detail somewhere, you know, we have that information. But I can go pretty much anywhere through the building. Where 
see a little bit more of it, I guess. And did you scan the full outside on that house as well, Steve? Yeah, we scanned the full outside on the house. Um, and it actually, you know, with scanning the inside, they were able to merge it so that we get, we don't have the grade line in, but I can take this model and I can simply add those couple little things of, hey, here's where grade is. But just that ability to, to go through and, you know, when you go to the last room here, you know, there's a complex bow window and it has it all equally spaced in there and drawn in appropriately so that, you know, I'm getting real-time data here in, you know, bathtub, toilet location, there, even the little soap dish gets That's scanned really cool. in. That's crazy. And the That's other so thing is, is there. all the outlets and thermostats. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've done a project, remodeling project, we get with the contractor and he's like, I know you wanted to put the door there, but there's the thermostat is there, right. and this is there, and now we have to move that. And Change it's, order. Yeah, well, and when you're going out to measure, you don't necessarily think of, hey, did I get all the thermostats? Did I get all of the outlets? Mm. And here, all of that information is being, you know, taken care of That's and being cool. put into the model. Look right there. You can see the ceilings drop probably for the vent fan. The ceiling is dropped. And, so that could be a conversation And about. you could turn this, and then I can, you know, at least take this. I can export that, bring that into my AutoCAD file, and I have a real true building section that I can now sit there and say, okay, well, this is if we were going to put cabinets on that wall, this is what they would look like. Hmm. And it's a, a true dimensional um, model of that elevation. That's pretty cool. What's the file type output, Greg, that comes to these guys? So it depends on what they order. Um, we support SketchUp, uh, Chief Architect, Revit, AutoCAD uh, 2020, our, our own uh, Canvas measurement report, hmm. and we're always looking to add new ones. So we're gotcha. constantly doing development internally. Uh, so if we don't support you today, it's likely in the near future we may. Okay. You know, one of the interesting things that I also like about this, we, we've only talked about it on the front end, right? We build houses. As you know, things change along the way. <laughs> Sometimes the drawings might not get quite edited exactly to what has been done. You can go in and you can scan the finished product, mm. and we can deliver PDFs to our clients as as-builts of the exact drawing. And it's not time that I have to sit there and say, okay, how am I going to figure out how to go out there, measure this, <laughs> and that's 10 hours i got to figure out this week. We can go out, scan it in an hour or so, send it off. we got as-builts, and I can send those that's off to the client. such a great client. use case. You know, I, I was just thinking as you said that, I bet some of my interior designer friends would love Canvas because they could go into a resale house where they got hired to help furnish it, to make decisions scan the house in 20 minutes and get that report back. And then I love when I, I built my own house, uh, finished about 18 months ago. And one of the things I was most happy with my interior designer is she did furniture layouts mm -hmm. and then helped us pick furniture that fit in the new house. And whether you built a new house or not, an interior designer could go in and do that <clears> as built. Uh, and for not much money, have these amazing, truly correct layouts to go, hey, how's this furniture gonna work? Uh, in here, that's that's a whole other use case I hadn't, hadn't even thought about. Yeah, there's a and there, there's a whole series of other programs that you can then bring in the Canvas PDF, and they have furniture um, pieces that I can just literally drag and drop mm -hmm. and do layouts and stuff. That's pretty cool. Greg, he, uh, Steve mentioned he scanned his exterior on the house. Mm -hmm. Anything we need to know about scanning exteriors? Because there are some limitations to how far the uh, LiDAR is actually working, right? That's right, yeah. So uh, the LiDAR sensor on the iPhone itself uh, can only capture measurements within about five meters, or about 15 to 18 feet is gonna be the maximum. So you think about how high you are, how or how tall you are, how high you can hold your arm and the distance from the sensor at that point. So reaching 20 feet is pretty, pretty uh, doable. Pretty doable. Uh, so your average two-story home, you're going to be pretty good to measure the exterior. Mm -hmm. uh, it can, if it is a two-story home, it can be a little difficult for us to get accurate roof mm. uh, pitches and measurements. So if there's uh, uh, unique architecture on the top of the roof and we can't see it, if the sensor can't 
reach that far, then we won't be able to include that in the model. We are trying to do some things to be able to capture more detail. Uh, so if you give us the address of the property, then there's other other data that already exists that we can use to, to help model that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then you also, you want to just be cognizant of how, you, how you're scanning because your exterior light, there's a lot more light sources uh, that can throw our sensor off. Uh, We're using, uh, the sensor is effectively a beam of light. Mm -hmm. And so anytime you, sh you scan into a, a light source, particularly the sun, or if it's a white a wall, really big light source, really big light source, uh, or if it's a white wall and the sun is bouncing light directly off of it, uh, it can just wash out the camera. Gotcha. And so um, those are two instances. We always say if it's an overcast day, it's a perfect time to scan an exterior, hmm. Mm -hmm. or dusk, or dusk. Uh, yeah, I can't wait till the end of the day. Go down That's there. right. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's 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 not the either or proposition for me. It's the ability that inner relationship of interior space and exterior space when you look at a SketchUp model, you know, we were talking about time. For me to duplicate this model with the detail on that staircase and such and to get it that accurate, it's it's easily probably 25, 30 hours of an, a very experienced SketchUp user. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I, uh, I remember a couple years ago, I hired somebody to do a uh, as-built floor plan in a house that I was going to sell, uh, and he came in with a laser uh, measuring device that was connected to an iPad, and he spent probably two or three hours in the house, you know, beep, 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 mm -hmm. beep, and, and like, like serious concentration levels, mm -hmm. and it was for a real estate floor plan, like not something we're building off of, mm -hmm. but literally like... Here you go, do you want to buy this house? Like a really basic, mm -hmm. and it was darned expensive. I mean, it was probably four times or f so the number that you guys have said that Canvas costs uh, for a really basic, just here's the walls and here's the doors. Yeah. So to get this much information at that price point mm -hmm. and to get the output that these guys are showing on Cheap Architect or CAD or SketchUp, Pretty impressive. Yeah, uh, I know that there's there been a there's a couple other products that are out there on the market right now. Um, people have been kind of chasing this holy grail of fast and cheap and high quality yeah. mm -hmm. uh, for a little while, and there have been a lot of failures failing in one of those areas. And so I think people are a little skeptical of Canvas. Like, can it really do mm -hmm. everything it says? And you know, we want we. We want them to try it because if if they watch the training video and do it correctly, they're going to get an excellent an excellent model. Yeah, funny you say that. If you missed at the beginning, these guys are giving you a hundred dollars towards your first scan. Which, if you're doing smaller projects, that could pay for the whole scan. Uh, you're going to use code Build Twenty Twenty Three uh, when you're checking out on your scans. Um, guys, we're almost time for Q and A. I've seen a bunch of questions coming in. If you haven't popped your question in, uh, there's a Q&A tab on Zoom, and I'm seeing, it uh, looks like a dozen or so of really good questions on here already. Put your question on, we're gonna switch to Q&A in just a minute. Uh, you know what, I, I just wanna throw yeah, one thing ahead. in that, that was coming to mind here. One of the other huge advantages of this is, when I go out and measure a house, I feel very confident in my skills. Been doing it a long time, they, they match up. But the beauty of Canvas is the accuracy isn't in the hands of the person that's doing the scanning, mm. right? So if you're an architecture firm of 12 people, you can send out the new guy who chances are really understands his phone and the apps, <laughs> but doesn't understand the architecture right. and what he should measure. So Canvas is really catering to somebody that is new to the building profession right. or an apprentice carpenter or something it's like hey stop by you know 42nd street and scan that bathroom on your way home yeah and they can do it and you can you don't have to worry about the accuracy because the accuracy is on canvas's back that's a great point i want to ask you a question zach i was thinking about earlier which is how do, how do you charge for it you know it does, it's not a lot of money but do you uh do you think of canvas as just a regular business expense or maybe saving me or do you charge clients for this? So I, should, I rolled all of those hours that would go into anything before construction begins into a, a, some sort of fee that we're gonna charge the client that's rolled into the, and if it's a big project, then it'll be a separate pre-construction agreement. Mm -hmm. And if it's, if it's a bathroom, then we're just gonna have like a small line at the top that says however many hours 
um, for design. So the client's paying for it. So if we can charge the client a little less and give them a little more accuracy, um, why not? And there's there's plenty of rendering services out there that will cost more mm -hmm. than Canvas does. But I already have because I'm using Chief Architect, like a photorealistic rendering yeah, yeah. that I can go through. So the clients, I've had no pushback on the price of that, especially. I'm, I'm actually more profitable because if I keep charging what it would cost to do this the old-fashioned way, yeah, and now and now I'm getting it for less. Now I'm getting it for less. <laughs> the client's not losing any value. Yeah. yeah, so and they don't see it to be expensive either on their end. No, and the and I've had no one say like, oh, I really wish we didn't have the uh, renderings. That really didn't help the process. <laughs> and no, no one said no one ever. Yeah, I mean, when I received this scan. I immediately thought, like, oh, I really need to move that register. So this is this is showing a register uh -huh. over the tub, and as soon as I saw that, I thought, yikes! That you know, if I was sitting in that tub, I wouldn't want to be looking at that. No. But it wasn't or blowing cold air on me, for that matter. Right. So I, it wasn't in the forefront of my mind that oh, when we demo, we really got to get the HVAC guy in to reroute that. Mm -hmm. And because the scan showed it, I was immediately uh, oops, going too far. I was immediately able to see that and get ahead of that because. You just run the steam through that. The steam, we the steam, the steam tub, for the steam, steam tub. tub. <laughs> <laughs> Can you show me that? I'm I'm not driving very well. Show me that eyebrow dormer that you mentioned on this particular oh, yeah. bathroom it's, and what that what that looked like. I think we're outside the house now. Whoa, we're, we're in the sky. Hold See, on. I told you I was a carpenter. <laughs> We've lost it. <laughs> we'll never know. We would never know. I don't know where it went. All right, so there it is. There you can see the roof section. I'll shoot Check that out way. That eyebrow. Oh dang, dude! So you can see the to get that photorealistic in a one-minute scan with lidar, and to the left of that is a curved wall, correct? Right, and you've got this baseboard detail. That was all. This is all as built exactly the and way this it was. was like a, this was like thirty bucks for you. Yeah, and even something as simple as this <laughs> is this this receptacle here is actually the GFCI that was protecting the whirlpool tub. Oh wow! So that told me, all right, I need to tell the electrician he needs to reuse this 30 amp home run for the heated floor and mm. we're going to swing it over to the other side so just knowing where that was was able able to make it a lot easier for me but there's no way i would ever detail a small bathroom renovation to this degree with that type of complexity yeah that's really cool well done sir that's cool it works really well how about uh did i miss anything before we switch to uh some q a time greg or steve any you know I, you I, that, I, that I, I, I had one question if i was out in the audience greg can you elaborate you said 18 cents a square foot but is there a subscription price is there an initial download cost is it just the 18 cents that we're paying it is it's just 18 cents per square foot it's free to download free to scan so you should you can actually no scan. commitment attached. Absolutely, that's right. It could be a one-time deal. One come time, to you and then say that's that, it. That's right. There's no okay. lock-in, um, and then your first hundred dollars is free. I mean, that's stuff. that's a pretty good deal, guys. <laughs> that's a pretty yeah, good that's a pretty deal right there. One right like, there. I'll come to you when I absolutely yeah. need something. You just stand by, <laughs> because they know once you've done it once, you're never going back. I mean, that's that's their sales pitch, right? Is like yeah. we could talk about this all day, but once you do it. And realize, holy cow, that was super easy and saved me a ton of time. And I got the eyebrow dorm, and I got this and that. Yeah. You're like, I'm never gonna do this again without it. Yeah. So now you've locked us into, you know, a hundred dollars a house, or fifty dollars a house, or three hundred dollars a house. Which, in the scheme of what we're talking about, big whip. Right. I mean, that's no big deal at all. Right. That's that's how many? And that's maybe one or two hours of Steve's yeah. time mm -hmm. uh, at his billable rate at whatever his hourly is. So it's it's very very affordable. In general, a bathroom renovation for us is going to be thirty to one hundred twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So tacking thirty five dollars onto that <laughs> <laughs> to get great to information. Get great information. Well, that's your cost. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm charging thirty five just for the rendering. Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's pretty but, awesome. Yeah, it just it's a it's a easy it's an easy value proposition. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Let's switch to Q and A. We got a bunch on here. We got some really good ones. So Joe says, and we didn't we didn't touch on this, so this is good to talk about. What about Android, Greg? What do we, what do we need to know about Android? Because we've only talked about iPhone Pros yeah. or iPad Pros from uh, the iPhone 12 or newer mm -hmm. Pro. 
or 2020 iPad Pro or newer? What about Androids? Yeah, so we're only on the Pro devices because they have LiDAR. Mm -hmm. Android does not support or have a LiDAR sensor. They don't have LiDAR on it. Yeah, and so without that, we can't get the accuracy necessary. Yeah. Um, there are ways to go about capturing dimensions, but it's not anything that a professional would be interested in using. Yeah, that makes sense. Here's a, here's a uh, tougher one. Uh, what are the significant differences from you guys to Magic Plan? Are you familiar enough with Magic Plan that you, yeah. can, uh, that you can kind of talk through that? Yeah, so Magic Plan is a little more involved uh, capture experience. Um, I, I haven't used the most recent Magic Plan. I don't know the details around that, but the Magic Plan that I'm aware of, you kind of have to walk around and tell it where certain things are in the room and mm -hmm. then tell it where the door is and the window is and kind of build these boxes. Um, but when you get into things like a built-in bookcase or you get into curved walls, uh, which we saw, um, unique architecture can be a little more difficult mm -hmm. uh, with Magic Plan. That. With us, we know all of that stuff. We're, we're collecting depth in real time. Mm -hmm. um, and so essentially, every scan, we're collecting millions and millions of measurements. Uh, and uh, we, don't, we don't care what it looks like. The, the the sensor doesn't care what it looks like. We can we can draw it and represent it in whatever software uh, you want. So, and to my knowledge, Magic Plan is really good at giving floor plans. And I think recently they might I've be able to used it, so. extrude it up to. But I don't know that you can order you a cheap state? architect I file. Have, I, I, I wasn't sure. Yeah. With it, so. uh, but order a Revit file or a cheap architect file or. Um, these other specialized softwares, I, I don't believe they support that. But I'm not super I, I could familiar with it, but I can tell you from what I've seen, the ease of use and the and the time that it mm -hmm. takes to scan something, like you were talking about this bathroom taking like, what, a minute or two to scan? That seems to me like that would be the big difference. Mm -hmm. And that would be the big uh, canvas win right there. It, it is. It's the, the just taking the video or what feels like taking a video for about a minute. Yeah. Oftentimes it's faster if it's a smaller And screen. it's a no-brainer activity. The, the yeah. gentleman that, when I did this, that was teaching me, he said, just think of you electronically painting the wall. Mm -hmm. And you just go up and down the wall like you were working an electronic roller. And the screen kind of... It, it, it just coincides with what you're scanning. Mm -hmm. it was... as, as you scan on the screen, there's an overlay right. of us saying, hey, you've hmm. captured this space already. Yeah. Here's a really interesting question from someone. Uh, Ken Fisher says, what about an as-built before drywall? I want to see plumbing and electrical and maybe a sub-slab as-built. Is that an option with, uh, with mm -hmm. Canvas? Uh, the short answer is yes. The longer answer is collecting details like Pipes can be a little difficult. Also, electrical electrical wires are hard to really, scan. They're too thin. <laughs> yeah. We are, 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 yeah, but if you're can... picking up the electrical boxes, I'm, you're probably more concerned with like, Where the box, the box is yeah. pre drywall than the actual wire. Interesting. So what so, it, it is if if a house is at its studs and you scan that, mm -hmm. we will model it as it's as the studs. Huh. So huge. it'll come in and then any of the architectural detail. Yeah, but again, sure. some of the pipes in, in walls can be kind of thin. And you're so going to see can't... through it, right? We you're are. You're see through across the oh, house. Right. So yeah, open every wall is going to be in that image, every pipe, every electrical box. Uh, so disseminating what's in the wall in this room versus the wall in the next room. Yeah, and, and, and again, just so I, I don't want someone to scan to think that they'll be getting all of the plumbing detail. Right. Plumbing detail right. is not something that we typically add yeah, into it's not, a model. It's not your normal use case, but exactly. it is an interesting thought. Yeah, we, we've gotten it enough. Yeah. We, we definitely have. But at this price, go scan it. <laughs> see what it, it does. In, yeah. Get 40 bucks and see if it works for yeah. you. Yeah, that's right. right. right? Just that's scan right. one room and see if it works for you. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Uh, another question that was a pretty interesting one. Um, uh, Peter says, is Canvas using some sort of artificial intelligence or algorithm to create the drawings, and is there some sort of human check before it's returned to the client? Yeah, um, uh, that's a pretty much exactly what it is. So in a, in a nutshell, at a very high level, whenever you submit the scan, um, there's an automated process that happens. That's where the model it begins to be created. Uh, and then we've created our own specialized tools that allow 
uh, humans to add detail faster. So we know, we're able to understand the different parts of a room, you know, but a, a fireplace, every fireplace looks different. Um, but, but we want your fireplace that you scan to look like the fireplace that's in that space. And so the details like that are being applied by a human using special software that we've built. And then we bring it into whatever third party software you ordered to finish that model. And then a human is looking at the model and making sure that what is sent back to you is correct. So we're double checking, verifying measurements, uh, double checking that the automated process didn't do anything weird because it's still young and early and funny things kind of happen. Um, but that's, that's essentially what the life of, uh, of, a, of a model looks like as it's being created. Yeah, that's wild. Uh, another question from Michelle. Can furniture be eliminated from the scan? All furniture is eliminated. It is. So okay, we, we only create things uh, that are structural. Um, anything like a lamp, a couch, a table, a bed is going to be removed from this space. Because there's dishes on the kitchen island. Those are gone. Here. That's uh, right. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's smart. Uh, another question, though, that was a good one uh, from someone anonymous. Uh, no, pardon me. This is from Steve Giovanni, uh, who is a builder we know. And is the accuracy the same across iPhones or iPads? Do LiDAR sensors have differences in quality? That's kind of an interesting question. Um, the LiDAR sensors on the iPhone and the iPad are the same sensor. So there's no performance difference. Okay. It's more of a personal preference. Do you like a smaller screen that you fit in your pocket? Mm. Or do you like a larger screen? Okay. I like larger screens because you can see more. I think it's easier to capture. But there's a convenience in just having it on your phone too. Yeah. Do you guys support Vectorworks? Another question. Um, not yet. We okay. are we are looking to support that in the near future. Okay, interesting. Uh, a funny question that uh, uh, one 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 thing there is a workaround. I know that um, there's a certain set of Vectorworks customers that are using our DWG output, our AutoCAD output, ah. and you can bring that. You can in. just input a DWG yes, into but Vectorworks. We're not. Can you export to DXF? We can. Yeah, so if you export to DXF, then you can bring that digital exchange file. Mm -hmm. It's what it, what I would write in AutoCAD to send to other programs that are non-AutoCAD. Oh, okay. So if he does that, then you could probably bring that into many yeah, applications. Yeah, so we, you can do that. But because we're not building it natively, there could be some funky loss. things with it. Yeah. There's uh, some loss of data. Gotcha. Um, but overall, it works for some people. But other people, it, there's a lot of work that needs to be done on that model to get it working. I mean, Zach's there. building to the nearest foot, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could check it and I have an image this uh, way we could show. Uh, one of the questions uh, was, is there uh, an image of that bathroom? And so I'm going to pull up my email. Uh, Zach actually has uh, a photo of that bathroom. Here's the photo from my, um, from the email that Zach just sent. So remember that? rendering a minute ago that he got. This is what his eyes saw. That's what his right. phone picture was. Look at that marble section there, the vent above the wainscoting there. Yeah, pretty dated looking bathroom as well. And then now let's create the after? Let's transfer <laughs> over to <laughs> <laughs> that How was dare you? Sorry. That was a decent burn, I gotta say. Uh, I didn't see that coming, Steve. That's pretty funny. And this is the uh, file that he got. Uh, actually, I take that back. This is not the file I got. This is your import into this Chief the, Architect. This is the file I got, but we've accessorized with lights a bit. But this is pretty much identically pretty much the what, what they got. gave us. Gotcha. And so, uh, so there's the file, and there's what his eyes saw. Pretty wild, huh? It's pretty <laughs> it's dang pretty good. Solid. It's yep. pretty solid, <laughs> and it captured uh, all that data. Did it capture the can lights? I actually didn't notice that. Uh, or maybe you removed them because they're not going to be in the final image. Yeah, I deleted them. You deleted probably them. Gotcha. because I deleted a bunch of stuff like the old mirror um, because we were changing all that just to sort of give an example of what the elevation would look like. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh gosh. There's a nice is... zoom in of the drywall. Yeah, I am. Whoa, well, I am way there. touchy. Sorry. Oh, I is. wanted to show the uh, the vent right here. Yep. But you can and see the window offset. The casing was cut. Yeah, all the that casing stuff and all in. that. And look, here's the photo of that. Look at that. I mean, that's really dang accurate for a, would you say, one to two minute scan of the room is all it took for you to get. 
yeah. on that LiDAR. Exactly. You see, they did miss the candle soot on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to take any points away. But. Candle soot. That's so disgusting. <laughs> oh, relax in the bath, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, horror movie is what that looks like. That's pretty bad. All right, let's see if there's any other questions. We had some real good questions, guys. Uh, we're going to wrap up in just a minute, but if you've got any other questions for me, I'm going to skip a couple of these just because we kind of uh, uh, addressed a few of these and some of the questions overlap. So I apologize uh, if I'm not getting to your question, uh, especially Sean some more. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but uh, you got lots of real good questions here. Um, will this also work with AutoCAD LT? I don't even know what that is. Um, if it is that can AutoCAD import Lite? I, I, yeah, AutoCAD like brings in DWG files, yeah. and that's the the reference file that it would create. Okay, gotcha. Oh, here's a funny question that uh, that I like: Is there any drones with lidar? <laughs> there are probably drones. I, I'm not I'm for thirty five dollars. Not for thirty five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> we we we've, we've had a lot of people that you know larger houses. They're like, can I put my phone on a drone? Because they have that yeah, and yeah, fly it around and like maybe the, like we can't weird. stop you from doing anything yeah. and technically it might work but we don't guarantee anything yeah, like that, that. it's it's really you know it's a uh, it's not really what canvas was built. i think i would try a stick before i would try yeah we and we've had people i mean we've had we've had a lot of <laughs> strange stands come through a little lift oh uh, yeah uh -huh. just kind of move across the you field. could yeah. get a lift that's yeah. true after you've destroyed our landscaping we've decided we don't <laughs> want to move forward with the project <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> now you owe me new landscape. Here's an interesting question. Chris Malcolm says, is there a way to drop MEP plans into the 3D model? This is probably actually more of a Steve Basic question. Steve, could you see using these outputs, let's say on a remodel, and trying to figure out how you'd overlay MEP in there? No, you'd have to, I, in the SketchUp model, you'd probably have to draw the new information in there. Yeah. It's not going to generate. In AutoCAD, you do create a 3D model, because I know when we mm -hmm. did this one, mm -hmm. we had the 3D model. So if you had a 3D model of that information, you could certainly import it. Yeah. Into the file. Uh, if the logistics is. I, I know if they work in Revit, which tends yeah. to be popular, it's possible that it could be done as yeah. an RVT file. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, I, I, I personally don't know enough about the software yeah. to be able to say one way or another. Yeah. Here's a great question that just came in from John a second ago. John Dunham says Could this be used for exteriors only, uh, or is this really mainly? designed for interiors with exteriors. We have customers that just scan exteriors as well. Yeah, okay. you can scan just the exterior and we will create a model of just the exterior of the home. I mean, you do a backyard patio if you were a landscape architect. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or I was mm -hmm. thinking if you're doing a, uh, you know, a James Hardy replacement <laughs> and window replacement job, you could get pretty darn good accuracy uh, to put a bid together, to put an estimate together. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, if you took that to your chief architect, you could also probably do a little pretty easy work of, or here's what it would look like in brown hardy, or here's what right. it would look like if we did painted, uh, you know, cedar, or whatever these other options might be, all from, uh, you know, a scan that costs not that much money. That's right. That's pretty cool. You know, when you're bringing in a SketchUp, SketchUp also documents the model info. So if you're, say, an energy rater, and you want to capture the volume of the space, when they create the 3D model, you have an accurate volume. Yeah. I've got a question. How does the pricing work when you're exterior only? Are you factoring in the the coverage of the house because you're not really capturing square footage? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Good so question. it's um, it's going to be uh, it's a 3D model, but it would be at our 2D price of 12 cents per square foot. So it would be the same square footage of of the the, the footprint of the home. Yeah. Okay. That's right. But we would charge it at. Uh, Twelve cents per square foot, and it's it's whenever you to make money. whenever we're trying, <laughs> we're trying. No, it's walking. a volume play, yeah. definitely oh, a volume play. Yeah, play. yeah. I, I, I mean, mean you know, we, we we think any we think anybody who has anything to do with the interior of an exterior of a home can use uh, some of this data for uh, a project that they would have to do. Heck and yeah. so it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. One last question, and this is a Zach question. 
Uh, so be ready, Zach. All right. Daryl says, could removal of, for example, a non-load bearing wall uh, that would be handled to a, for a client presentation, could you do that in either Chief Architect or maybe even SketchUp based on the output file that you got from these guys? In other words, I'm assuming Daryl's a remodeling contractor. He's getting a scan, and he's, and he's sounds like he d he's not familiar with SketchUp or Chief Architect. Uh, you know, how right. would you answer that in terms of like client presentation? And here's here's the output file, and here right. let me show you so, what that looks like. So, if I'm understanding that correctly, let's act like we're doing this bathroom, and they wanted to put a door in the middle of this wall. That's right. right. So I would instead of just scanning the bathroom, I would go out into the hallway. I would scan the adjacent room. Mm -hmm. Then I would get a model of both rooms. Yep. And then in Chief Architect, it's all drag and drop. So I would just drag a door into that wall, and then they would have that rendering. That's cool. Here's what it would look like to open up into this exactly. space. Or if I'm going to remove this wall between your dining room and your family room, here's the space now that you can see, Mr. Client. And here, if I open this wall up, here's how big this space, and here's the rendering. Right. And it sounds like what is so interesting about you, Zach, is you're, you know, you're really a carpenter at heart. Uh, you He's forced a, to do all this other stuff. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you're using these tools uh, to be able to sell jobs and to do projects without the use of an architect, right. without the use of an interior designer or other people, <clears throat> and yet you're using these uh, digital tools that are available, uh, and you're using your good knowledge, not your architecture degree, your master's right. in architecture, to show people, hey, here's what it looked like. And once they see it, boom, people go, oh, I totally get that. Let's do it. You know, sure. what will this cost? Yeah, it is worth noting, though, that at least where I live, I can't do that. So we need an architect for anything structural. Right. But I don't think that's the case for the whole country. Yeah, that's right. But um, but so like that bathroom is not a structural remodel. It's simply a rip and removal exactly. uh, project. Yeah, so retrofit. But for the sake of... Of selling the job, if I wanted to cut that out in 3D and if they decide to proceed, then we bring in an architect or a structural engineer to give us the information we need to proceed. Yeah, yeah, and it's so interesting to hear you use it as a, as a part of your sales process and also as a differentiator from uh, those other remodeling and home improvement contractors that maybe will give someone a floor plan sketch, but we all know that, that uh, only a small subset of the population can translate a floor plan sketch and here's what it's going to actually look like right. at my house. Yeah. In my mind, I could build that. I've been doing it for years and I can't do it. Yeah. You know, and that's, <laughs> that's most clients, I would say. Yeah. Uh, anything? Uh, I got one more for Greg. Greg, is there yeah. a limit in size? Like if I'm a commercial architect and I'm rehabbing old mill buildings, can I go in and scan 30,000 <laughs> square feet of space and send it to you and get it back for 18 cents a square foot? Uh, you can. Careful how you answer yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, it's not. They're chomping yeah, at the yeah, bit. Yeah, no, I know. Eighteen uh, cents a square foot. It's, it it's, it's not. Uh, it, it's not what Canvas was built to do. Uh, okay. That doesn't mean it can't do it. Okay. Um, it really depends on the space. Big, wide open spaces with forty foot roofs, really hard for us to do yeah. because the no. But if it was like sensor. fifteen foot, but what if I go in on Monday and I scan five thousand feet, come in Tuesday and start scanning? Is your tech your technology? I'm assuming is smart enough to stitch it together. Yeah, so we can stitch scans together. That's right. Um, uh, it's it helps if it's broken up into smaller spaces. Um, there's some planning that would that would go into that. Okay. There's not really anything on our website to give you guidance. If you have a project so like call that, you with a reach out job. to us. There you go. Hello at canvas.io. Uh, we have people there that are waiting. If you have a unique project or you have a hundred thousand square foot warehouse. Let us know. We can work with you. We'll tell you, here's the best way to go about it. And, and determine if Canvas is really the right tool right. to use anyway. That email address, one more time, Greg, just because you said it quickly. It's hello at canvas.io. .io, not .com. That's canvas right. Canvas.io. Mm -hmm. Guys, really appreciate it. Any final thoughts, Zach or uh, Steve? Good to go? Yep. Uh, big thanks to Canvas for sponsoring. Don't forget your code, build2023. Uh, you can download Canvas on the App Store, the Apple App Store. Really straightforward. Greg, really appreciate your time and sponsoring today's no, webinar. Thanks for having me. Uh, I think we had a great time. By the way, if you're not familiar, Steve Basic uh, is on Instagram almost on an hourly basis. Uh, Stephen Basic <laughs> I try. Architect. I, try. Uh, I, pump, I pump up Zach. And if, you, and if you don't know Steve, seriously don't know Steve, you should go watch his videos on Build Show Network because he's the only architect I've ever seen who takes an overhead camera takes out his, his red Sharpie pen that's now a character in his scenes called Big Red and shows you how he came up with his drawings and actually 
allows you to get into his mind of here's how I created these drawings and these details. Uh, I, I have never seen anybody else do that ever out there in the web, whether it was free or paid. And Steve's doing that on a weekly basis for free at thebuildshow.com. Same with Zach, shooting videos uh, both from his workshop uh, and on his job sites. That's right. Uh, Zach Detmore is Detmore101 on Instagram. And if you go to thebuildshow.com, you can find Steve's and mine and Zach's. And we've got 10 other, nine other uh, tradespeople, uh, remodeling contractors, electricians, plumbers, drywall contractors, some other builders and remodelers. We've got a great team. And we're publishing literally like two videos uh, plus a day over there, as well as some series content now. Like Steve's got a couple under his belt. And he's currently in the middle of filming Build Show Build Boston. So we've got all kinds of cool stuff happening over here. With that being said, guys, thanks to Canvas for sponsoring. Thanks to you guys for watching. If you are watching this later on our website or on YouTube, sign up for our email, which is going to be in the description below, because we'll send you an email twice a week. My team sends a Tuesday and a Friday email that says, here's the webinars that are coming up. And that's how people that watch this live and were able to ask questions and interact with us found out about that. It was through that uh, link on our, or pardon me, that uh, email from my team on Tuesdays and Fridays that, that got sent out. With that being said, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.